Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful time we have had in your presence. And as you go into the realm of your word, I pray that you speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Let your word encourage us. Let your word inspire us. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, about uh, four weeks ago, we started a series of life lessons from the lives of biblical characters. Life lessons from the life, lives of biblical characters. And uh, just to refresh our memory, we started from the life of Joseph. We started from the patriarch Joseph. And we took some lessons from the life of Joseph. The, the key lesson that we, as we started from looking at his life, that Joseph lived a life of favor. You can see favor all around Joseph. Wherever Joseph found himself, whether he was in, in his master's Potiphar's house, when he was in prison, when he stood before Pharaoh, you can just see favor all around Joseph. May we all enjoy the favor of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, we also said that Joseph lived a life of always showing gratitude. A life of always showing gratitude. It was a sense of gratitude that he had that made him not to lie with his master's wife. He said, how can I do such a thing against my master's interest? My master has been so good to me. There is nothing that he has not given to me. You know, everything this house he has put under my control. How can I not do except you, my master's wife? Why can, how can I pay my master back this way? So, he said, I'm not going to do it. And the lesson we took from that is that to those who are your benefactors in life, it doesn't matter how little they've been a source of help to you. Always show gratitude every time. When you have the opportunity and let your gratitude, let it be qualitative. Let it be qualitative. I remember, I said to your husband or to your wife, don't be every time that you are going to be buying boxer shorts, on his bad day. How many boss as well does he want to have? Change it at times. Don't let it be every time that you are going to be buying a particular set of uh, un underwear for, for, for your wife. Do something different. Those that God has used in our life, let's just show gratitude to them. Amen? Let's show quality, gratitude to those that God has used in our cause in life. And the Lord will position us for more favor even as you do that in Jesus' name. And the next thing that we spoke about is that we must make sure that wherever we find ourselves, let's make sure that we use our gift. Every one of us, God has given us one gift or the other. We, when we started speaking about competence, the, the gift of Joseph positioned him ultimately before Pharaoh. He was able to interpret the dream of the butler and the baker. And that was how he found himself before Pharaoh. Amen. So, if we are ever we find ourselves, we can always deploy our gift. And when you have a gift and you want to do what you do, make sure you do it with excellence. Amen. You know, like I gave an example, it's not everybody that can turn on a stove that is qualified to be called a chef. Amen. The fact that you can turn off, is turn on a stove does not mean you're a chef. You know, some people, they say they are caterer, they will cook, they will say it's your love rice, part will be yellow, that part will be brown. You don't even know what name to call it. Now, when you do that, when you do that, it will be difficult. It will be difficult for people to be able to give reference about you to others. Amen. So, whatever we do, I'm sorry for those who are caterer, I don't mean to put you on the spot. But all our caterers in the church, they are wonderful caterers. They are caterers with magic fingers. You agree with me? Amen? It can be in any other field. I'll just use that as an example. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. So, I said, when we do whatever we do, let's do it in such an excellent way that whatever we do is going to commend us to others. We don't need to advertise ourselves. Our product will advertise us. Amen? And I said lastly, that whatever you do, Never let the people have a bad experience. And I said, if they have bad experience, they will just say Sabina. Some of us of my generation, we know what Sabina is in those days. Sabina used to be a what? A near line. Thank you. But because they always give such a terrible service, when some people now want to give acronyms of Sabina, they say such a bad experience, never again. 
Sabina, such a bad experience never again. And that was how the airline died. Because people had bad experience. Others couldn't refer to the others could not say this my the experience I have with them. And that was the end of the airline. Such a bad experience never again. As a professional, as somebody that is in any trade, never leave the people with that kind of impression of Sabina. Tell your neighbor, don't leave the impression of a Sabina. <laughs> Glory be to God. And this body, we are going to take a step further by looking at some other attributes or lessons that we can learn from the life of Joseph. Genesis 39, 7 to 10. And it came to pass after these things that Joseph, master's wife, cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what, what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I. Nor has he kept back anything from me but you. Because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was, as she spoke to Joseph, day by day, that he did not heed her. To lie with her or to be with her. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. So let's take some other lesson that we can. Number five is character. Can somebody say character? Regardless of our skill, bad character will shut the doors of opportunity against an individual. When people say he is good in what he does, but don't give the job to him or her, you've already lost it. They may not say more than that, but that speaks to character. They don't need to say more than that. Because if, you are, if they say you are good in what you do, but the person they say, but don't give the job to the individual, that means that character is an issue. It's an issue. You're a vendor, and people are saying, ha, has such and such bad experience with him or her. Listen, gift and favor may open doors unto us. Characters keep us there. When character is lost, everything is lost. Proverbs 24, 21. He said, my son, my daughter, fear the Lord and the king. Do not associate with those given to change. I mean, another translation says, don't associate with people that cannot be trusted, who are not firm. They change just like the weather. Beloved, when character is lost, everything is lost. Competence without platform is a waste. Competence without character can be a cause. I always tell people, don't worry about reputation. Worry about your character. Your character is who you are. Your reputation is what people say about you. And good or bad, everybody will always have opinion about the other person. But character is like our second nature. Africans have been saying that character is like smoke. It cannot be hid. Our character is like our shadow. It goes with us wherever we go. There are some people, they cannot just help themselves. It's difficult for them to speak the truth. Difficult to show courtesy. Arrogance is all over them. Pride. Never make mistake. Talk less of giving apology. You know, never made me say kind of swagger. Talk less of giving apology. It's difficult to know where they stand on issue. Always double face, always ambivalent. 4 Samuel 18, 14. Listen, the Bible says, and David behaved wisely in all his ways. He behaved wisely. And the Lord was with him. Can we all make mistakes? Oh, the answer is Yes. Oh, yes. At times, people make terrible mistakes, not because they are bad, but because they are human. We cannot make mistakes, but when we make mistakes, just accept that as human beings, you are vulnerable. In humility, accept your mistake, apologize if it has offended another fellow, and be on the good page and move on. Amen? Amen. It's not everybody that loves people who do you know that they are wrong, and they, you know it's very obvious, and they are still sticking it to you. That you know, they, they, you know that they, are, they don't even want to accept that in any way they are wrong. Amen? We are all vulnerable. We are all human. Number six, be a dreamer. Tell your neighbor, be a dreamer. Have a dream. Have a vision for your life. 
Joseph had several dreams. A vision is an articulated expression of your desire tomorrow. Vision to buy a house, vision to be debt free, vision to complete a program, to do such a thing and such a thing, to become such and such a person. Vision is about what you want to become a step into your future. Listen, all remarkable individuals and corporations in the world have a vision. Whether you talk of Walmart, the biggest corporation in terms of the people they employ all over the world today, or you talk of Apple, of Microsoft, these are the most valuable corporations with, with network running to trillions of dollars today. Coca-Cola of this world, they have vision. All successful people, they are visionary. The starting point of a vision is desire. It doesn't matter how undefined or unrefined your desire may be, but at least have a desire, have a vision for something. Vision is a desire to attain something. Desire to be at some level at some point. Desire to govern in a particular area, to be noted, to be notable in a particular area. Desire to do something remarkable, to live in a particular area, to live, to do a particular job. Life reserves such levels and places for visionaries. Also, said people to have a vision and a corollary, most, if not all unsuccessful people, lack vision for their life. Most unsuccessful people lack vision for their life. May we not be in that company in Jesus' name. In life, it said that whatever you see is what you become. Lamentation 351. The prophet already said something very powerful. He said, my eyes affect my heart. My eyes affect my heart. So in other words, whatever we see, we tend to become it. It tends to go into our heart. We tend to behave as to what we see. So that's why I just said I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why would I look at a strange woman? Because whatever enters our eyes, automatically goes into our heart. Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the Bible says, people do what? They perish. Organization perish due to lack of vision. Family can perish due to lack of vision or be stranded. When the head of the family has no vision for his life, talk less of the life of people following, the family will be stranded. May we not be a leader that will have vision for those who are leading in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever we think, we also have the tendency of becoming. Proverbs 23, verse number 7. In Genesis 13, 14, we all know the popular, the, the popular story. The Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord has separated from him, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Whatever you can see, not what's at what this world and westward. I give to you and your descendant forever. That was it. Whatever you can see, vision. Tell your neighbor vision is important. Whatever you can see, focus become critically important. Don't be distracted. Set your eyes as a flame regarding your dream, regarding your vision and your goals. Write your vision down so you can be, become better focus on it and articulate it and run with it. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. He said, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablet, that it may run who resist. Listen carefully. You run with your vision by making strategic plans to achieve it. An incomprehensible vision cannot be executed. I want to become this, thank God, but what step are you taking to become it? Let me also say that vision is in progression. It's never, it never stays static. Look at various stages to the ultimate accomplishment of the dream of Joseph. Look at where he started when he had the dream. Look at all the stages, all the challenges, all the difficulties, all the opportunities and everything. Vision can also change time as time and circumstances dictate. So upgrade yourself. After you have already got it to a particular place, you don't stay static there. You have to upgrade yourself. Those who are in the IT, IT field, they know what they, they can relate to what I'm talking about. They continue to do courses. They continue to do more certification, more training. Why? Because the landscape is always changing. 
Amen. When life is indicating that things are changing, anticipate the changes and make needed adjustments. Let's adapt. Let's learn. Let's read. Let's update ourselves with knowledge and requisite skill. You know, apps are constantly being upgraded and uh, updated. If they will send you a message on your phone, change this to iOS, that is internal operating system. They will always send that to you. In other words, the software that runs your app needed to be up updated. Let's read. Some of us, I'm sorry to say this, some of us will not open a page of textbooks since we left college. Amen. I mean, you may not like what Pastor is saying, but that's the truth. <laughs> Once we finish college, then read the subs. It's not good enough. Let's read. The evil told, doctors told us that it's part of the things of keeping your mind healthy. It's part of the things of, of, of you know, of keeping yourself healthy, especially as you approach certain ages. And whatever we have in our heads, is what put us ahead in life. Whoever doesn't stay ahead gets left behind in the race of life. And I said, if you want to be economically relevant, read economically relevant materials. Avoid trash. Leave trash to professional vendors of wicked gossips. You know, a man's life will move in the direction of his greatest thoughts. After reading my Bible in the morning and my meditation, Guess the next thing that I read. I read the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> Amen. Because that, that is what, I, apart from my relationship with God, to make sure that I take care of it, the next thing, I want to live well. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I have an uncle in law of blessed memory. He will say, which, 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 which side of who loves to dwell in penury and hardship? Oh, Mata. Oh, dear. <laughs> let me, let me, so don't let me speak in tongue for this money. He said, which child? Which child? Who, who, who will say I love my child to live in penury and hardship? No. No. Don't let us be spiritual about all these things. You can still be godly and righteous and do a sanctimonious and still be rich and make heaven. Amen? Yes. Listen, let's update ourselves. Whoever thought that a profession that is called a uh, typist will run out of fashion? <laughs> Amen? In those days, I mean, it's a certification that they will say, as part of your resume, you can type 120 words per second. <laughs> to the glory of God today, ah. if you still want to be carried, you can type it right. All the books that I have written, that I have authored, that I published, I did the typing myself. On my phone, on my iPad. Our children, they don't go to any type of school, type of school. They can do 120 words per second. <laughs> and you are now saying that the only qualification that I have uh, that I want to carry to the 21st century is that I can type 1,000 words. Who cares? Upgrade yourself. Tell your neighbor, upgrade yourself. Listen carefully. 20 years ago, nobody could have thought that the professional called typists would become a seat. They are now called executive secretaries because they do more. They do more. They've since upgraded themselves. If you go to upgrade yourself, you just get left behind, stranded. But nobody needs that service again. Glory be to God. Let's always think about the future. Technology is changing the landscape. Don't get left behind. You know, there are some pastors, there are some pastors that they said, ah, I just, I don't know how to navigate my hand uh, when it comes to, when it comes to computer. Ah, I say in 21st century. 
Let's say form. Text is the technology is the bridge between the past and the present, and between the present and the future. Shall we rise up? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. Yes. I know the message may minister to some. It may not minister to all, but to some that is ministered to, I pray for you. Whatever may be your own heart desire, whatever future you desire for yourself, may the Lord give to us in Jesus' name. And as you go to the journey of the week, I pray that the Lord will be with you. The mighty hand of the Lord will be upon you. The presence of the Lord will go with you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.